In the previous video in this water fasting series, we discussed a bunch of health measures related to a five-day water fast that was studied by a group of researchers. We discussed how much weight loss occurred, as well as insulin resistance measures and cardiovascular measures. On that last one, cardiovascular, we even ran across some counterintuitive data related to cholesterol and triglycerides. But the question now is, does a longer water fast, say over two weeks, lead to more dramatic results? And do we see the same counterintuitive results related to cholesterol and triglycerides? Let's find out. While we looked at a study for the five days of water fasting, we're now needing to turn our attention to a new study performed by a different set of researchers who recruited 26 overweight participants, mostly women, and had them stay at a supervising facility that had them undergo a minimum of 10 days water fasting, but most ended up water fasting for over two weeks regardless. There are more details related to this study, but I'll leave them in my detailed analysis video that I'll link for you or my study notes if you're interested. The bottom line, these people consumed only water for a minimum of 10 days, and the statistics reflect results from people who stuck to it over two weeks. So where does that leave us with the results? Well, let's begin with weight. Like I said in the last video, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to imagine that if people don't consume any food or any calories as a whole, that they will lose weight. So obviously it led to weight loss, but how much? Almost nine kilograms or a little under 10% of their weight. Now, another aspect of this study is that the participants were given a refeed period where they were allowed to consume food again, focused on plant-based foods. So heavy on fruits and vegetables. Why am I telling you all this? Well, if you watched the last video, you might know to what I'm alluding. Since these people were given a chance to eat, their body had a chance to replenish some of their muscle and liver glycogen stores, which means that they were able to recover some of their water weight because glycogen attracts water into the tissues. Okay, so you may not care about that, but I'll bet you that you care about fat loss, right? It's one thing to lose body weight, but what about fat loss? Well, if we find the difference of the total amount of weight loss from the weight loss after the refeeding period, we can get a rough estimate of how much fat was lost since we've accounted for at least some of the water weight through the regain over the refeeding period. So how much fat, again, roughly did they lose? About 7.5 kilograms. Now, this isn't a direct or perfect measure. I'm making some assumptions, but it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility to experience about 80% of the weight loss as fat loss. Okay, let's move on to something that I imagine will also be of interest to you, insulin resistance. So first, what happened with the two weeks plus of water fasting on measures of blood sugar, insulin, and direct insulin resistance calculations? The fast led to a significant decrease in blood sugar, which amounted to about a 16% reduction in blood sugar. Concomitantly, there was a 10% reduction in blood insulin levels. Now, those in combination led to a pretty impressive over 20% improvement in insulin resistance, as measured by HOMA IR, the insulin resistance metric. This all implies that water fasting improves insulin resistance, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'm leaving something out that I'll tell you at the end. For now, let's sit tight with that conclusion. Let's move on to our cardiovascular measures like blood pressure, cholesterol, and triglycerides. Remember, this was one of the contentious ones when looking at the five-day water fast in the previous video. When we focus on blood pressure, remember systolic is the highest pressure in your arteries when the heart is actively generating force to pump blood, and the diastolic is the lowest pressure when your heart is relaxing, filling for the next heartbeat. In the systolic measure, there was an 11 point decrease, which is about an 8% improvement. And in the diastolic measure, no difference, no decrease, but also no increase. So putting it all together, water fasting likely improves blood pressure moderately. How about cholesterol and triglycerides known as blood fats? All forms of cholesterol decreased. If that's total low density particles or high density particles, 
they all dropped in the range of about 7 to 10 percent. And while less dramatic, triglycerides did not change. Now, for those of you that watched the last video, you're likely a little confused because the previous video showed some significantly different results in certain areas like cholesterol than this one, which only adds to the confusion. So let me put it out there that we can confidently say a few things. One, water fasting reduces body weight and increases fat loss. Two, water fasting lowers blood pressure. Three, water fasting improves insulin resistance. Uh, well, but wait, that last one may not be true. Why do I say that? Because while fasting did dramatically reduce insulin resistance, when the individual started eating again, they experienced a massive increase in insulin resistance. We're talking about an incredible 280% increase in insulin resistance. What in the world is that about? Well, I'll tell you what. We now know a few areas water fasting is incredibly beneficial. And I'd like to address the confusion between the data from the last study and the insulin resistance data from this study, because I do think I have a few explanations to dole out. So in the next video, we're going to put this to rest and make sense of the remaining questions. I'll speak to you then. Thank you.